Welcome back. In this lecture, we will build a simple NiFi pipeline and also visually understand various key terminologies in Apache NiFi. Let's assume a scenario where we are receiving data from different source systems. The input data looks something like this. We have two columns in the file, ID and phone number. Phone number may have special characters in it, so we have to read the file, remove the special characters, and store it into a processed location. We have a staging layer where we receive raw files as generated by the source system on a daily and hourly basis. Once the files are received in the staging area, we need to do some processing or data scrubbing and move the data to the processing location. From the processed location, the downstream jobs will pick up these files. This is a simple use case which we will try to build in Apache NiFi. If you break down the activities in our use case, you'll see we have three steps for building a pipeline for this. First, we need to fetch the file from staging. Then we need to do some processing, that is, removal of special characters from phone numbers. And then, we need to put the scrubbed file in the destination or the processed location. To perform any activity in NiFi, we have something called processors. Let's explore what is a processor in NiFi. Processors are basic blocks used to achieve any kind of data routing, transformation, or system-related activity in Apache NiFi. NiFi has many built-in processors to ingest, transform, split, and distribute data to many systems. For example, we have get file to read a file, get HDFS to read a file from HDFS, execute SQL to execute an SQL command, and many other processors. In our use case, since we have three steps, we need three NiFi processors. To fetch the file from staging, we need a get file processor. For removal of special characters from phone numbers, we need a replace text processor. To put the file in the destination, we need a put file processor. Let's add these processors to our canvas. Click on processors and drag it to the canvas. Search for get file, double click on it, and add the get file processor to the canvas. Similarly, we will add replace text to the canvas. Search for replace text, double click. And now we will add the put file processor. We have all the required processors on the canvas now. Get file processor will read the file from the staging area, so we'll have to add the input directory path in the configuration of get file. Click on properties. Here we need to add the input directory path. This is the path from where we will read the input files. Click on OK and click apply. Once the input files are read by the get file processor, the content of the files should move from one processor to another in order to get the required activity done. We have a terminology in NiFi to achieve this data movement from one processor to another. That is called a flow file. Flow file in NiFi is the actual data along with a set of attributes which moves from one processor to another. Some examples of flow file attributes are name, unique ID, and path. But one thing we need to understand here is we need some kind of link between these processors to enable the movement of flow files. In NiFi, we call these links connections. Connections and relationships are important terminologies, and we will also discuss them in subsequent lectures. But for now, let's have a basic understanding of what connections and relationships are in NiFi. Connections are a link between two processors that allow data to be routed in different ways based on the processing outcome. Each connection consists of one or more relationships. A relationship is named to indicate the result of processing a flow file. Once the processor has finished processing, it will roll out the flow file to one of the relationships. 
Let's understand this with an example. We have three processors. Suppose processor 1 is trying to replace special characters from the input file. While doing so, processor 1 can either be successful or it may fail. The outcome of this processor can be success or failure. In both cases, we have to tell NiFi what actions should be taken. If we want processor 2 to run, once processor 1 is successful, then we need to link these two processors for the success event. This link between these two processors is called a connection, and the success event becomes their relationship. Similarly, we need to add a connection for the failure relationship also to tell NiFi what action to perform in case of failure. Also, based on the kind of activity your processor is doing, there can be different kinds of outcomes. For most processors, the outcome can be success or failure. But there are processors like Evaluate JSON Path, where the outcome can be matched, unmatched, etc. Connections and relationships are fundamental to understanding and working with NiFi. We will explore those processors in subsequent lectures, but for now, let's focus on understanding connections and relationships. Another important aspect is that we cannot leave a relationship undefined in NiFi. We must define connections for all relationships supported by a processor. In some cases, like in processor 3, if we don't want NiFi to take any action upon completion, we can auto-terminate those relationships within the processor itself. Let's see this practically. Right-click on the Get File processor to see what relationships it supports. The Get File processor supports only the success relationship. Once the Get File processor is successful, we want the Replace Text processor to be triggered so we need to add a connection between these two processors for the success relationship. Success is selected by default, as you saw, and get file only supports the success relationship. Let's now see the relationship supported by replace text processor. Right-click and configure. We can see it has two relationships, success and failure. So in this case, we want put file to be triggered once replace text is successful. Let's add a connection between these two for success relationship. To give an idea when failure relationships can be used, we will add a log message processor to the canvas. Double click. Now just create a connection between the replace text and log message for failure relationship. So what we want to say here is when replace text fails, we want our message to be logged in NiFi. If it is successful, we want the put file processor to be triggered. Click on the canvas and drag it to the left side. Once the message is logged, we don't want NiFi to take any action, so we will have to auto-terminate the relationships supported by the log message processor. Right-click. And here we can see it supports the success relationship, which we have to auto-terminate. Select that and click on Apply. Similarly, we will have to auto-terminate the relationship for the put file process as well. This is because we cannot have any unhandled relationship in the data flow. Right-click Configure, and we will terminate both success and failure relationships for the put file processor. The red color in the status indicator of the processors shows that the processor is valid, but in a stopped state. For the put file processor, it is showing a warning. It's because we did not specify the output location in the put file processor. Let's right click, click on configure, and go to properties. Here we can see the directory is empty. We need to add the location of the directory where we want the processed file to be placed. Click here and let's add the location. Click OK and click Apply. The warning is gone now. All the processes are now valid and in a stopped state. Our use case is to replace all the special characters from the file we need to configure the search value and the replacement value in the replace text processor. Right-click and click on Configure. 
Here we can see the search value and the replacement value. Click on the search value, delete this, and put this as the search value. Click OK. For the replacement value, click here and set empty string. Click OK and apply. Now our pipeline is ready. But before we trigger our pipeline, let's put some files in our input directory. This is our input directory from which our get file processor will read the file. And this is the output directory where the put file processor will place the processed file. To imitate the real world scenario, we have written a Python script which will keep on generating input files every 30 seconds. Let's trigger the script to generate input files. We can see the first file got generated here. Every 30 seconds, there will be a new file generated here with some random ID and phone number value. Let's open this file and see the values. These are the random values generated by the script. This is the ID, and this is the phone number with special characters in it. We can see three files have been generated so far. Now we can trigger our pipeline. There are three ways to trigger the pipeline. We can trigger each processor one by one by right-clicking and then start. Or we can select the processes and from the operate palette, we can click the start button here. If we want to start all the processors at once, then press shift, select all the processors and click on start. Our pipeline is running. Let's go to the input and process folder location. Now we see all the files have been moved from input to the process folder. Let's open a file and see the content. We can see the special characters have been removed from the file. So our pipeline is working fine as per our use case. We have covered all important NiFi key terminologies and we have also completed a simplistic demo of a basic Apache NiFi pipeline. Check out our top-rated Udemy course linked in the description for a complete step-by-step hands-on demo of NiFi, covering all key concepts. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for more informative content on cloud, data, AI, and generative AI. Hit the bell icon to receive future notifications.